that beat is 589, that's for sure. Look at that. A 237.92. Uh, Craig. Yeah. Excellent weekend. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, we're very happy. Very yeah, happy. I bet. Uh, three out of four passes, five seconds. It's certainly a personal best for us. Yeah. 588.4. Just uh, we're very happy with it. The weekend went well in, in these conditions. It's uh, colder than we're used to running in, but uh, we learned a lot. And we, uh, we had a great weekend. Very happy. Um, you know, I know this bike has run fives at different iteration, iterations at times before. Have you ever done three out of four? We did three out of four last year. Okay. At, at here, but uh, it just shows this weekend, I think, was more about consistency. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, in, in some changing conditions, we uh, we managed to run three out of four with five-second passes, and uh, not a lot of people can say they've done that. So. We're just happy to have done that, and we wish Larry and Steve could have been here with us, but we just wanted to put on a good show, and I think we did that. Um, did you all do much to the changing tune-up on the bike this weekend uh, once you ran the pass on Friday, or did you pretty much just stick with it? Well, we came to the racetrack, uh, and we took everything and turned it down, Went because it's easier to come from under mm -hmm. than it is from over. We took it down, we probably took it down too far and we learned that in our first test pass and then we started coming back up to it. And uh, and then the, the one pass where we spun the tire, mm -hmm. we had taken it bit back down a little bit because uh, the air was so darn good, we were a little bit worried about it, but then uh, we realized we had the right setup yesterday, so we went back to that. So it was moving it around a little bit, but just trying to make small steps so we could keep track of where we were. Sounds good. And it worked out. So, great weekend for uh, Van Tyne Nitro Sports and everybody involved. Everybody worked hard and we had a great weekend. Couldn't ask for more. And uh, you got Valdosta coming up. Valdosta coming up. Good, uh, great weekend for that to get some preparation. We're looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Back, great to be back on track and uh, yeah, it's going to be a great race. Right. Can't wait. Right. Congratulations and. Uh, Good luck in a few weeks or a month and a half or whenever that is. Great. Month, Thanks a lot, Tim. Yeah, man. Uh, Dave, congratulations on a uh, fantastic weekend. Thanks, Tim. It was a, it was a great weekend. It's same as last year, I have to say. This seems to be our lucky weekend to run fives. I think we ran three of them last year as well. Yeah. The bike uh, loves this time of year, loves the cold weather. It's a Canadian motorcycle originally. It is. And well, from Canada to Hamilton, New York, that's uh, not a big big leap into the tropics or anything. I uh, know. Uh, in fact, my uh, my son yesterday FaceTimed me uh, and uh, he uh, pointed the, uh, the phone out the window and, uh, I saw, and it was snowing. There was flurries oh. coming down. Talk to me about the weekend and um, riding the bike and and how it felt to, to have the bike do exactly what you wanted to do three out of four times. Yeah. Um, well, it's this year has been really inconsistent for us. Uh, we tried uh, a bigger fuel pump, which uh, did not work out. We were making up for it with timing and just hurting a bunch of parts. So we went back and put the smaller gallon per minute pump on, which matches the blower better. Right. Uh, the power is really coming from, we seized the blower just warming the bike up for ATCO. We uh, sucked a screw out of the uh, butterfly and the supercharger right into, this, right into it. And, uh, so it's expensive. It, it ate it up. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> I, I believe in the two is one, one is none uh, thing. So I had purchased uh, yeah. the same blower from Larry last year to have as a spare. Right. So when we put that one on, it actually made 30% more boost. Uh, oh, really? And so we've been really trying to adjust to that. Then what should have been the same blower? Yeah. So the other one must have been tired. Okay. So we have a brand new fuel pump. Uh, which I think is a little more efficient, and again, we have this supercharger that's making way more power. Right. Uh, according to Larry, that's why we were dropping holes, you know, we just weren't loading the motor, so that supercharger must have been tired. Right. So anyway, uh, after uh, ADCO's uh, fiasco, uh, everybody knows, you know, Larry uh, unfortunately uh, got burnt up, and so uh, we just... He was chasing you. We just, yeah, yes he was. <laughs> he wouldn't have been, uh, he is, I just hit the tire after he hit his, he right. hit his earlier. Right. And uh, and so right. the pedal fest ensued, right. and uh, you know, I I was fortunate to just let mine spin through. I think Larry uh, he worked the throttle pretty hard, and uh, 
I don't know. Uh, it was a, sort of a nitro rookie, but uh, I think Larry said himself that uh, that wasn't probably the smartest thing to do. Right. Um, but, so we decided since we were so far over with this new supercharger and everything, that when we would come here, we'd turn it way down and, you know, come back at it from underneath. Right. And the first pass in practice, uh, the thing just wouldn't get out of its own way, so we took too much out, which actually was fine. Right. So at least we knew where, and so then we stepped it back up and went the uh, 598, and so we thought, okay, finally uh, a five, first one this year um, on Saturday, and then um, it was Friday anyway. Um, Friday. Friday, thanks Tim. And then uh, same kind of thing happened. I mean, yesterday, you know, against Bob, it was good. We went out and went the uh, 89. Uh, and, and Bob did a great job. Uh, I think a 635 at 225 is a great number yeah. for a high gear only bike. Yeah. Um, and we were real happy with that. And then uh, this morning, we got canceled last night just because of the oil downs and the weather and 700 plus motorcycles here, mm -hmm. which was okay because it was getting pretty cold. Yeah. Uh, this morning, uh, we almost did the same thing. Or we did do the same thing. We just took too much out of it because the air was so good, it was like 400 feet below sea level. Took too much out, uh, shook the tire, and got out of the groove, right. uh, and had to shut it off. And so we came back, and they're like, well, what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, I'd love to run an 88, because uh, we're trying to save some parts. As you know, Larry builds my engines, and since he's a little under the weather, we didn't want to you know, go down there with a wheelbarrow full of broken stuff before Valdosta. Right. So we were trying to be a little careful, and of course, at the same time, do a personal best, which is kind of a tall order. Uh, but, uh, you know, the thing left hard. Uh, we were 202 miles an hour uh, at the eighth, and it carried through, and so uh, it, it worked. You know, it's pretty much too flat in the back half, yep. and, uh, and the 88 came up. Uh, and so that was best run ever. So yeah. what's not the like? Right, right, right. Best run ever, and you've got plenty to keep working with. Yeah, the motor uh, just leaked down 10% all the way across. So wow. it's it's happy, it's healthy. Um, right. We'll probably go through the engine just to make sure there's nothing broken in there. Right. But it leaks good. It's it's. You know, I think I said this last year, so I don't want to jinx myself, but, right. uh, you know, it, we went into Valdosta last year with three fives. We're going in this year after three fives, and so I hope. Got my right. fingers crossed. Right, right, right. right, right. Should have, uh, I think, you know, the strongest bike coming in, I, you know, right. as far as I know. Yeah. So uh, that's encouraging, and, you know, like Absolutely. I said, without Larry there, uh, which is unfortunate, but hopefully. Uh, you know, we got some votes, but everybody, everybody in that class has been five pretty much at this point. So yeah, yeah. Me, Larry, will be able to come down and watch and. Uh, Larry, I just, I, he just called me and congratulated myself and the team. Uh, he's planning on being there with his new bike uh, out on display. Uh, so yes, uh, Larry will right, be good. there with his good. new bike out. Um, good. But you never know, it's Larry, so yeah. I'm not counting him out. He says he's coming down to display only. Yeah. Right. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Right, right, right. I don't know. Who do you want to thank? Oh, well, I'd really like to thank the team first and foremost. They really uh, worked hard on the tune-ups this weekend, uh, as always, the McBrides. Um, you know, we certainly were on the phone with them uh, on and off throughout the weekend, you know, and they're, they're constantly uh, around, even if they're not here at the racetrack. Um, uh, as always, Van Tine Imaging employees, uh, they, they let me come out here and do it. Um, it's nice, even though uh, the, the track has changed hands, that they had us back, so. Thanks to the Miller family, and I think it's IDG is the IDG, new IDG. Yes, IDG, got that. <laughs> the new track owners. So yeah. thanks for having us back. Yeah. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, you know, certainly uh, my girlfriend Lori, who absolutely hates this, but uh, <laughs> she didn't like the pro mod. And she really doesn't like the four. Uh, but she right. she uh, she grins and bears it. So right, thank right, you, I appreciate right. it. Now, how long did you ride a Pro Mod, first and foremost? How long did you ride a Pro Mod? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I, uh, I've been racing 28 years. Yep. Um, I believe, 
probably 15 to 17 years. Right. Um, we started out pushing uh, rocks uphill with our nose, trying to race Kawasaki against the Suzuki's. Had, you know, actually I think probably the best success you could have with a Kawasaki. Sure. And then uh, about four years ago, or five years ago, we moved over to Suzuki, which was, a, was the right move to make. Yeah. And uh, we did pretty well with the uh, ADRL and the PDRA. Yeah. Uh, and then I got the opportunity to ride the fuel bike uh, almost three years ago now. Yeah. And uh, so, so I was uh, I was around when ProMod was invented, actually. Yeah, and, and for a, a, a very long time, I know you had your eye on fuel yep. in one form or another. Yep. And and then at some point, you actually had your eye on this particular motorcycle. Sure. Um, how long would you say when you were on the Pro Mod were you thinking, I'd like to transition to fuel? How many years were you, was, would you think? Oh, that? a lot of years. Um, you know, seriously, probably five, seven. Um, you know, that, but the trouble is it, it got to the point where I, I thought I missed the window. Right. Uh, there's no way to build a bike, which can take two, three years. Yeah. Uh, you need, you know, the trailer, the team, the tools, yeah. uh, all this stuff. And so I figured the, you know, the, it just wasn't going to happen. I should have started it years ago. Yeah. And uh, I got the call from Mr. Pollard, who had, you know, the, had it all. Yep. You know, and it was ready to go. Yep. And uh, and so, you know, I had to. I figured opportunity was only going to knock once, and so, um, you know, I gave it a go. And so yep. here I am. So it just, um, I guess it was just meant to be. Uh, that's all, because it wouldn't have happened otherwise. So it'd be convenient to say that you probably you might wanted to have made the switch sooner, but really, it was the per the timing was perfect. It was it was the right bike, the right moment. It was. Yep. You know, exactly. No, it was. Uh, it was. It was the golden opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, you know, which nothing against it. I love uh, pro mod bikes, but sure. I'd still be there for sure, and that wouldn't be a bad thing. But I do. I do like this better. Absolutely. When I decided to move over to Top yeah. Fuel, uh, and I, you know, pro mods are plenty fast enough. Yeah. Most of the guys I talked to thought I was crazy, and I think really. But, just, you, but you've been wanting to do this forever. Yeah. No, I, I did. But I, mean, I think it was the, longer than five or seven years. Yeah, I feel like it's, probably, it's pretty much as long as I've known it's, you. Well, that's true too. I mean, it's part. But when I senior, started, I thinking, seem to remember you wanting to see what a uh, a, uh, a a, a, a v, top fuel V twin with a Yamaha cylinder. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, <that was> Nigel. <laughs> is it Nigel Stewart? Nigel Patrick. Nigel Patrick. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to have him put Yamaha heads yeah. uh, and have uh, be like a top fuel Harley basically yeah. with the cylinder, Yamaha Warrior cylinder heads on it. Yeah. And I thought it would be a cool deal. Uh, yeah. Yamaha was uh, having none of it. Yeah. And uh, so it, it never materialized. Right, right, but right. I thought it would be pretty good. Right, right, right. All right. Um, so, you know, I mean, you kind of won a this mythical top fuel championship last year. Sure. Under similar circumstances, Larry was here, but he was broke uh, at some point, you know. And you, and you, but but you know, by by running as consistently as you did this weekend, same as you did last year, um, it really it's, it's sort of your 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 place is kind of in the, in the fuel world is sort of really truly legit now. I mean. I think um, I think that's my seventh uh, five-second pass, yeah. and I believe maybe short of Corey and yeah. of course Larry. I don't think anybody else. Uh, there's yeah. been plenty of guys, obviously, in the fives. Yeah, uh, nine at this point, yeah. ten actually. Now that Sam went into fives, yeah. But I either have the second or third most yeah. fives out yeah. of anybody. And yeah. uh, so that, I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, congratulations. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, man.